Good afternoon, everyone. Dear colleagues, a warm welcome to this next part of our AFET meeting today. Colleagues, we will now focus once more on our relations with Africa, which reflects the importance our committee gives to the political, security and economic relations between Africa on the one hand and Europe on the other hand. We will first hold an exchange of views on Tanzania, followed by an exchange of views on the situation in Ethiopia. I would like to give a warm welcome to our guest speakers, Ms. Rita Laranjina, the Managing Director for Africa at the European External Action Service. It is once again a pleasure to welcome you, Ms. Laranjina, in front of our committee. Moreover, I would like to also welcome Monsieur Didier Vers, Head of Unit for Eastern and Central Africa from DG INTPA. Colleagues, last month, to be precise, on the 13th of October, I met in my office here in Brussels, Mr. Tundu Lissu. For those of you who might not know him, Tundu Lissu was presidential candidate and challenged former President Magafuli in the 2020 Tanzanian general election. In 2017, he survived an assassination attempt and he now lives currently in Belgium. Mr. Tindulisu, however, is not the only one who was forced to leave Tanzania. Opposition politician, God bless Lima, for example, also had to flee and has been granted asylum in Canada. Ms. Larangina, Mr. Vers, dear colleagues, I must say that I am deeply concerned about the human rights situation and the shrinking of civic space in Tanzania. Since 2015, this country has been sliding towards an authoritarian regime with restrictions in the political space, civil society and media to cost for democracy, rule of law and human rights. Moreover, Tanzania is also affected by regional insecurity. There is instability in the Horn of Africa, the Great Lakes region and the Indian Ocean. And there are the risks of spillover from the Islamist surge in northern Mozambique. Dear Ms. Laranjinia, we have held an exchange of views on Tanzania in this committee in November 2020, right after the elections took place on the 28th of October last year. Now, one year later, I'm interested to hear the assessment of the European External Action Service on the political situation in the country after the death of former President Magafuli and under the new President, Ms. Samia Saluhu Hassan. Further, the detention of Mr. Freeman Mbove remains a major concern. Mr. Mbowe has been in prison since July the 21st when he was arrested along with a number of other senior opposition officials just hours before they were about to hold a public forum to demand constitutional reforms in their country. I was also informed that last Sunday, the government, due to terrorism threats, prohibited a meeting of the opposition party, Chadima. However, the responsible authorities didn't raise the terrorism threat level. Obviously, the reason stated by the police force could be considered as unfounded. Ms. Langinia, what are the activities of the European External Action Service on these kind of matters? And how is the EAS supporting constitutional changes in Tanzania, which is the only way that will guarantee freedom, justice, peace and security? And finally, the deterioration of the rule of law and the independence of judiciary is alarming. Freedom of association expression is very limited. In spite of this situation, the IMF approved in September 567.25 million US dollar in emergency support to Tanzania to address the pandemic and said that Tanzanian authorities have committed to strengthen governance and transparency. So in this context, I would like to ask you how much money the European Union is currently spending and how 
this spending is monitored, scrutinized and in the end justified. So I would like to give you the floor first for 10 minutes, then to Monsieur Didier Vers, and then I will give the floor to a number of members as appearing on the speakers list. Once again, Ms. Larangina, warm welcome. The floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman, and uh, uh, thank you for this opportunity for this exchange with the European Parliament. As you've said, we have discussed Tanzania uh, almost one year ago, and uh, 2021 has been a year of profound changes uh, for Tanzania. I hear your concerns, but I think that there are also reasons for optimism. The exchange of views is uh, therefore very timely. It is very important for us so that we can exchange notes and um, exchange on our reading of the situation. As you said, the country emerged from elections in October 2020. These elections raised concerns. In March 2021, uh, President Magufuli uh, passed away. The vice president, uh, Samia Sulu Hassan, took over according to the constitution without unrest. Unquestionably, it was a remarkable feat in this region. In these last uh, months, we have witnessed what we consider a positive beginning for President Samia, domestically and internationally. Uh, President Samia has um, adopted conciliatory messages of appeasement to civil society. Uh, she has been, uh, we consider, uh, discreet and effective. She has avoided uh, populist messaging. She has introduced some changes in government. Uh, she is consolidating her political position of engagement, her term going until 2025. And we have to recall that she took office only March last year in exceptional circumstances. March this year, sorry. Um, so domestically, we see some uh, changes that we consider that uh, move towards more tolerance for freedom of expression that enables the media to be more outspoken. NGOs admit to feeling less pressure. The measures announced and the cooperative tone have been received positively by the international community and by the civil society in Tanzania. President Semi has also shown leadership and commitment to advance gender policies. She has made high-level appointments. Uh, several women have been uh, um, appointed as notably ministers of foreign affairs and minister of defense. A policy of late President Magufuli, which required pregnant girls and young mothers to stop attending school, was recently overturned. There has been also a 180-degree turn internationally. President Samia swiftly visited neighbours in Kenya, Rwanda and Uganda and joined two SADC summits. She attended the UN General Assembly, COP26, and she recently visited Egypt. On the important front against violent extremism that you referred to, which appears to increase dramatically in the region after the Kampala attacks, the lingering threats from Cabo Delgado insurgents and from Al-Shabaab in Somalia, President Samia is also bringing much needed openness and avenues for collaboration. Contributing to the SADC mission in Cabo Delgado, but also publicly acknowledging the need for civil society and media to play a role in the fight against terrorism. On COVID-19, Tanzania moved from being an outlier in denial of the gravity of the pandemic to a partner that engages in a prevention and vaccination campaign, sharing still bad, basic epidemiological data and with the ambition to develop vaccines and medicines. A positive situation is also seen in Zanzibar, where important where Zanzibar that has important evolved powers and an autonomous government. In spite of the electoral violence in the islands, the CCM candidate who was declared winner made a coalition government with the opposition party, ACT Wazalendo. The coalition has been upheld despite some challenges. Stability in Zanzibar is crucial for Tanzanian stability and local grievances can also have broad connections and repercussions across the Muslim East Africa coast.
Despite the progress made, there are still some shortcomings, namely regarding multi-party democracy and political and civic freedoms, as you have highlighted. Pluralism and multi-party democracy stalled in the national parliament. The October 2020 elections led to a national parliament in Dodoma with 20, 97% of elected members from the ruling party CCM. There is no representation of the political opposition compared to the previous cycle. The main opposition party Chadema refuses to accept the election results. The chairman of Chadema remains in prison, as you have said, since July, accused of financing terrorism and other serious charges. This judicial process is ongoing and the EU, together with its member states and other members of the international community, follows closely, including through attendance to some of the court sanctions. The situation has certainly an impact in the national political environment. We will continue to follow this closely and you are are well aware of an exchange of letters between yourself and uh, HRVP Borrell specifically on this issue. We, um, President Sami announced she would meet with the opposition parties for dialogue months ago and this meeting has not materialized yet, which we consider a setback. During the universal periodic review of Tanzania in Geneva in November, many pertinent questions were simply noted and not accepted by the government of Tanzania. The need to progress on issues of human rights and fundamental freedom is clear. The legal environment still remains restrictive. After the many policies entrenched during the Magufuli rule are kept. This affects media and civil society and business. Although the atmosphere is more relaxed, it, this restrictive legislation is still in place and the supporters of the hard line across the administration and of the ruling party CCM maintain some influence. In the course of the past months, they, we had an opportunity for a constructive re-engagement between EU and Tanzania. The President of the European Council has been in touch with President Samia over the phone and also in the margins of the Junga. This high-level re-engagement has also been very important as it signals the will to be constructive, to cooperate on both sides and also to share messages of those issues in which we are still concerned. Tanzania and the EU held a session of political dialogue on the 29th of October, the first in many years, which I co-chaired together with the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Liberata Mulamula, in Dar es Salaam, and also in presence of the Minister of Defence. In this dialogue, we were able to discuss many topics. The first topic on the agenda was democracy and human rights, and we highlighted our concerns. We also... Um, discussed issues related to economic and development cooperation, regional security and multilateral topics. The dialogue was friendly, constructive. We issued a joint communique that mentions our agreement to hold political dialogue every year, which would be a welcome change and which will be an occasion for us to continue to pass on our messages of support and of concern. Regarding human rights and elections, we specifically mentioned the recommendations from the Electoral Observation Mission of 2015 and the Tanzanian authorities were open to cooperate on this with us. Regarding trade, there was an agreement to hold a technical discussion on the prospects of the eu AAC economic partnership agreement. On security, we encouraged further cooperation between the EU and Tanzania as there are grounds for common interests in the region and the EU is already offering support, for example, to SADC and actively intervening in Cabo Delgado. We also discussed openly the situation of COVID-19. During my visit to Tanzania, I also met with leaders of opposition parties, including Chadema and Asiti Wazalendo. Here in Brussels, we have received uh, Chadema leader Tundu Liso. It is important to maintain communication with all possible stakeholders and we will do so. The Partnership for Development Cooperation is based on decades of cooperation where the EU and Tanzania have worked together for sustainable development across sectors. The MIP for 21-27 was presented to member states and is proceeding smoothly. My colleague Didier Verset from DG INPA will develop on this. In conclusion, Tanzania remains an important partner for the EU. 
We may not always be in full agreement, but we have regained the possibility of openly discussing our points of difference and of openly call the attention to those issues that you have rightly mentioned, Mr. Chair. We have opened up a number of important avenues of cooperation that can deliver clear results. We can now work better together in supporting a more conducive environment for investment, for developing trade, cooperating on regional and maritime security, all the while remaining a reliable development partner aligned with national objectives and committed to good governance and human rights. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Ms. Langinia. And then I give the floor immediately to, as I just heard, your pronunciation is Didier Versé, or Didier Vers, perhaps you can say it in the beginning, but anyhow, a warm welcome to the Foreign Affairs Committee. The floor is yours, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, as already said, Tanzania is an important partner for the EU, both in view of, the, of its economic potential and the role it could play in the region, promoting peace and security and regional economic integration. The Article 8 just mentioned uh, was took place in October, whereas last one was in 2017 and is very promising. This political dialogue has to be seen as a new departure and we'll have to work with to maintain both parts' commitment in this dialogue. Already said, the stability of the coalition government in Zanzibar now allows us to restart project in this part of Tanzania. Supporting this region and its development effort is, a, is key for the stability of the country as a whole. It's important to know that during this long period, without formal political dialogue, we have nonetheless maintained good policy dialogue, thanks to our cooperation programs and to our budget support action. Besides the political change that has been taken place, public health has become a priority. And here, as well, there has been important change in the policy. For instance, Tanzania resumed official reporting on COVID-19 in September 2021, which it had stopped in April 2022, uh, 2020. Sorry. Information on prevalence and deaths is now produced on a weekly basis, also this limited testing and capacity to face the pandemic is still being developed. Tanzania has signed up to the COVAX facility and launched an ambitious vaccination campaign. Also, vaccine hesitancy is still a problem. Up to now, around 1 million people have been vaccinated. In view of this re-engagement, as the EU does across Africa, the EU remains committed to fight against the economic and social consequences of COVID-19. The EU has provided more than 100 million to Tanzania since the onset of the pandemic. Tanzania was not on the initial list of the southern African countries that have been indicated at high risk regarding the Omicron variant of COVID-19, but we as a Commission remain very attentive. In the current Tanzania context, development cooperation is a means to support political change. And it is, this is the spirit that I wish to present you, the latest on multi-annual and annual programming. The four years multi-annual programs, MIP for Tanzania, will soon be adopted by the Commission for 426 million euros. It knowledge that Tanzania and the EU share a common interest in ensuring peace, security, stability, but also environmental protection and reduction of CO2 emission in the context of the climate, global climate change, considering the new well risk of internalization of conflict as well as migration crisis. It will support the Tanzania Five Years Development Plan 2021-2025 and the Zanzibar Development Vision 2050 on competitiveness lets export growth, economic transformation, infrastructure linkage, human capital, governance and resilience. The MIP priorities area are, the first one, green deals as partnership in particular between the public and the private sectors, 
to allow sustainable economic development, Green Deal will promote investment in productive sectors like agriculture, forestry, fishery and tourism, and service delivery. Adaptation to climate change and climate change-related disaster preparedness will be underlying concerning all programs. The second priority will be human capital and employment, which are central to Tanzania's development strategy and will contribute to providing individuals with education skill set, decent living condition, notably through social protection, and employment opportunity, in particular green jobs in SMEs. And the last but not least priority area is governance. We will promote a platform of dialogue between the government, civil society, private sector, and we will focus on governance system for public service delivery, social accountability, and the rule of law for an inclusive society, including, of course, fundamental value as human rights and democracy. Embedded in the three priorities area, two team Europe initiative on blue economy and system sustainable cities are being designed jointly with EU member states and development finance institutions with the view to have a transformational impact on Tanzania during this MIP. The annual action plan 2021 for Tanzania is ambitious and aimed at promoting Tanzania and the EU common interest in protecting the environment and reducing greenhouse gas emissions, in particular in cities. Three specific actions will be developed. The first action is green and smart cities for 75 million euros. It will promote green and smart cities to the benefit of their communities and businesses. It should help creating an enabling regulatory and policy environment for cities to promote an inclusive economy, especially for women and youth. We will support more resilient cities thanks to improved service to urban poor communities and to the use of the relevant digital solution. All that should support sustainable growth and local economy in selected cities. Action number two is gender transformative change program, breaking the glass ceiling for 70 million euros. This action will focus on transformative change for all six gender action plan, three priorities, from the high level policy dialogue with the government to the grassroots level, through different complementary action focusing on government policy, legal and institutional reform, and enforcement, including the local level and the promotion of the behavioral change. The last action is Tanzania Net. 35 million euro. We will focus on the transformative impact digitalization can bring to Tanzania. We want to support the acceleration of financial inclusion and of the use of financial technology, the expansion of connectivity within the country while reinforcing the level of data protection and cybersecurity and the adoption of an implementation of e-government strategy. Let me to mention that real opportunities now exist for the private sector. The three programs of the AAP 2021 will support the private sector directly or by helping the development of a business-friendly environment. For this purpose, we will use the new tools at our disposal under the European Fund for Stability Development Plus, what we call the EFSD Plus. Let me to conclude that Tanzania is a key in the region and is showing positive economic and political trends in the context of continuing stability. I'm aware that, the new, that not everything sorry, is perfect in Tanzania, that the human rights situation is a concern, as well as the situation of the media and the civil society. But I'm sure that we can have a transform transformational impact through our partnership by helping to avoid slipping backwards, supporting the current process in Tanzania, we build for the benefit of Tanzania population. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you to 
both of you to present the situation in Tanzania. We will now have an exchange of views. We have time until roughly three o'clock, so 45 minutes maximum. I will first give the floor to our colleague Carlos Sorino for three minutes. He chairs the ACP-EU Joint Parliamentary Assembly. Please. Thank you very much, Chair.